We are now firmly into December. And I think that we could just about say that this is the beginning of winter. This autumn, over the last few weeks and months, we've had some mild weather, we've had some very stormy weather, and we had a five day cold snap where we had negative temperatures each day here in Durham. Don't worry, this isn't gonna be a video just about British weather, but a video about how a heat pump performs during autumn and during a cold snap. So the costs, the comfort, the emissions, everything. Um, I'm gonna give you all the data about how our heat pump has performed over this autumn period. I'm gonna split up the data I share into three distinct slots. So from the end of September to the middle of November, the five days of negative temperatures in November, and then the few weeks since as we get into December. I hope that'll be helpful just to see how heat pump performance changes as the weather changes. I've been tracking the performance of our three-year-old heat pump since, uh, well, for the last three years, but specifically since the end of September. So I can give some detail on the efficiency during those three different segments of weather and autumn overall. To begin with, some context. Uh, and the context is that autumn and spring, similarly, uh, they're the peak months for heat pumps. So we've got cooler weather, so much so that we need to heat a house but it's milder than winter, meaning that there's more heat in the air for a heat pump to extract and move. And um, that means that autumn is perfect for a heat pump. But with that cold snap in November, we can see how the weather and the temperature makes a difference to heat pump performance. So using our heat meter and our electricity meter dedicated specifically to our heat pump, I've taken sporadic readings over the last couple of months to check how it is performing. So segment number one, 20th of September till the 17th of November, just before it got really cold. Over that time, our efficiency of the system averaged 386%, or a coefficient of performance of 3.86. That means that for every kilowatt hour of electricity that we've used, we've delivered 3.86 kilowatt hours of heat, and all the associated comfort and coziness that that brings. Over that time, we used 625 kilowatt hours of electricity, which would have been just uh, which would have been just under £140 at the price cap. This electricity delivered over 2,400 kilowatt hours of heat. If we'd have delivered that same amount of heat from a, let's say, 90% efficient gas boiler, a quite efficient gas boiler, it would have used 2,680 kilowatt hours of gas, which at the gas price cap would have cost £146.86. So, a heat pump at the price cap in almost two months of autumn would have saved us six quid. But on top of that, we weren't on our electricity price cap, we were on a smart tariff called Octopus Agile, which means our average rates over that time were about 20.1 pence per kilowatt hour, which was about 4p lower than the price cap. So our real costs were actually 126 pounds, a 20 pound saving. Either way, at the price cap or on a variable tariff, the savings are not that much to write home about or to make a video about. And I guess this is the key point about heat pumps. We saved a little bit of cash, but we saved a lot of CO2. Our electricity use over that time would have been uh, would have had a, emissions of about 130 kilograms of CO2. During the same time, a gas boiler to deliver the same heat and the same comfort would have been around 490 kilograms of CO2. So a saving of just over a third of a ton in seven weeks. That's a good result. So that's the first segment of autumn. What happened next? Well, the cold weather did arrive and this did have an impact on the efficiency of our system. Um, so over the five days of the cold sap, we saw temperatures down at minus three, we saw snow and we saw ice on the ground. If we had an efficiency of 386% during mild weather, what would the colder weather do to our heat pump efficiency? Well, I took meter readings on most of the days during that cold snap and a few weeks since then too. So first of all, the context of how cold did it get? Well, well it was actually fairly cold for November, uh, but we have had colder days in the last few years. I did a video uh, early this year specifically about the cold snap in January, um, but th for this week in November, the lowest temperature I saw on my weather app was minus three but it was below zero overnight each day of the week before getting back to balmy double figures at the weekend. Okay, 
Enough context, how did the heat pump, heat pump do in those negative temperatures? Well, from an efficiency of 386 for the first segment in autumn, we dropped down to 294% at the start of the week, and then 268% by Friday, the coldest day. And these are the kind of efficiencies that you may see reported by uh, skeptics of heat pumps or people trying to slow the transition uh, on a regular basis to demonstrate that they don't work. I've, I've even heard an academic working on this kind of world, uh, looking at this kind of data, I've heard them say, well, they don't work as efficiently as you think. But what are we meaning when we talk about efficiency, uh, particularly efficiency in a cold, slap, cold snap? Even at the lowest efficiency that we saw in that week, when it dropped to minus three degrees outside, we would still be emitting 60% less CO2 using a heat pump at its worst compared to a high efficiency gas boiler. That step change in CO2 is great, and that's why we're trying to install heat pumps. But what about the cost? Well, that week in isolation, how would a heat pump compare to an efficient boiler? Well, again, to maintain comfortable temperatures in the house, uh, for us, that means heating our main social space to above 20 degrees throughout the week. Uh, and to heat all our hot water, we use 223 kilowatt hours of electricity in one week. Um, at the price cap, that would have cost us £54.63 pence for a week, which is a lot of money. That much electricity delivered over 620 kilowatt hours of heat. So overall, for the cold snap, we were down at an efficiency of 278%. We can make some assumptions about how much gas a boiler would have used to have the same levels of comfort, and let's give it a really high efficiency of 95%, uh, as good as a, bas a gas boiler uh, can get, it would deliver that amount of heat using 652 kilowatt hours of gas. At the price cap, that would have had a cost of 40 pounds and 72 pence. So that cold snap, that week in isolation, would be 14 pounds more expensive to run our heat pump than an efficient gas boiler. 14 quid to reduce emissions by 73 kilograms in one week. Is that value for money? Maybe, it could be for some. That cold snap in isolation makes the case for installing a heat pump, particularly when just considering finances, quite difficult to make. Either we have to be passionate about reducing our emissions or the cost to run a heat pump uh, or the cost of electricity needs to change significantly. I guess one caveat is that we didn't pay the price cap rates, we used the Octopus Agile tariff uh, instead and there are other energy companies offering novel tariffs for heat pumps. So our electricity rate was a little bit cheaper uh, that week at 22 and a half pence per kilowatt hour. So our costs were more like 50 quid, but still more expensive than a gas boiler. So if that differential between gas rates and electricity rates was less, and the cost to run a heat pump would be lower too and more competitive even despite the cold snap. Okay, cold snap over. Let's get back to the performance of the heat pump in the final segment of autumn, the last few weeks. Uh, the negative temperatures didn't last longer than that five day period. And that's really a fact that tends to be true for the whole of winter, at least where I live. We have sporadic negative temperatures, but most days we have uh, highs of above zero and uh, towards five, six, seven, eight degrees. After the cold snap in November, the temperature rose again at the weekend and the heat pump performance also went up. So that last day of the cold snap, we went from 260% uh, efficiency on the Friday up to 387% over the weekend. The temperature really makes a difference. Since the cold snap and for our third segment of autumn, it has been classically autumnal. It's been a little bit wintry, maybe the weather, it's been a bit stormy and windy. Um, the efficiency of the heat pump has averaged 340%. Not up, not up as high as the start of autumn, uh, but not bad for the cooler wintry weather. At this efficiency, at the price cap, it would have cost us 7.2 pence per kilowatt hour of heat delivered with a heat pump. We could compare that to 6.6 uh, .6 pence per kilowatt hour of heat delivered by a high efficiency gas boiler. And just for context, I've been really bold for the gas boiler here. Uh, many gas boilers won't get anywhere near that efficiency, particularly if running a radiator is higher than uh, a flow temperature of 50 degrees. If a gas boiler was only 86% efficient, which many will be, the cost would be the same as our heat pump in this last segment. So 
three segments of autumn. High efficiency for seven, eight weeks, a 30% drop in efficiency for five days, and then back to pretty good efficiency for the first couple of weeks in December. For the whole autumn, uh, the time since we've been heating, since the end of September to the second week in December, our efficiency has been at 353%. So we've delivered 4,170 kilowatt hours of heat using 1,180 kilowatt hours of electricity at a cost of 241 pounds on our Octopus Agile tariff. If a 95% efficient gas boiler at the price gap had delivered the same heat, that would have cost 272 pounds. So, even with gas so much cheaper to, uh, than electricity, our cost to run a heat pump in a Victorian terrace during autumn with a cold snap and some stormy weather would have been around 30 pounds cheaper uh, than a gas boiler. And our emissions have been 70% or 650 kilograms lower than if we had a gas, gas boiler overall. I should say that in these calculations I've not included the 200 kilowatt hours that our Ripple Energy membership has provided in terms of low emissions electricity and then the savings that that's given us and our bills as well. And I should say that our home doesn't have any supplementary low carbon technology like solar panels or batteries. We live in a fairly average Victorian terrace uh, on the edge of Durham with an air source heat pump. And that's it, okay? Loads of numbers, loads of stats there, but that is a heat pump working as normal, heating our home, keeping us comfortable at a similar cost to a gas boiler over the whole of autumn. I'd love to know what you think. Drop me a comment in the comments below.